How do folks, how's it diddling? In this video, working on the MG. It's about time and uh, yeah, show you what uh, bits and pieces I've done to it and uh, including replacing the front wing. I've painted it up. Uh, now the reason I'm kind of jumping on this and wanting to get it done is because some idiot decided it'd be a good idea to enter it into a show on the 9th of March and it's currently the 14th of February. So this is what I'm doing for Valentine's, <laughs> working on this turd. So come and join me as I work on the MGZR. How much rust? All of it. So this is what I've been doing with the MG. That is a brand new wing. That is the old one. And as you can tell, that's green. So for oh, the past week or so, because the weather's been absolutely cack, I've been spraying that wing inside the house. Yeah, I know, ventilation and all that, not great. But, you know, I've been doing it at night when the, the missus is in bed. So quickly do this because it's starting to rain. So, yeah, so that's the new wing. That's the old one. Now, you can see, see once the colour difference, this one is actually quite badly faded. Um, that's the original wing, so it's, it's what, 20 years old now? Uh, and all the damage that it's got, big crease in there, and it's bent there, and that's buggered. And you can see on here, all the paint's kind of faded. And, uh, yeah, so that's the, the new wing. Now, don't judge me too hardly on this. Uh, this was used, sprayed using spray cans. I got a mixture from a local motor factors to match up the colour. And it looks really good. Uh, I'm really pleased with the, the finish. Granted, it will probably need still one more coat of lacquer on top. And then it will need uh, sanding down like two, two, two and a half thousand grit. And then buffing back up because uh, it's got it. it you know, it's done with spray cans. It has got a bit of uh, orange peel in places, but, you know, the fact you can see the outline of my reflection, I'm uh, thoroughly, and, and house there, I, I'm thoroughly pleased with it. It probably uh, it looks a lot better on camera than it does in person. But there you go, there's a comparison of the two. Now, I did start to spray outside on this crate, but... I put the first guide coat on, um, but because it's been so cold and not ideal weather, like I say, look, it's, it's raining now. So I had to do it in uh, in there, <laughs> which is not great. But yeah, I'll ignore that. That uh, Unfortunately, the wing did come a bit damaged, which is a bit of a bugger. But yeah, it is... Uh, for saying it's out of a spray can, and there's Henry, the cat. Yes, I have a cat. Got two. So yeah, for saying that uh, this is all out of spray cans, it looks actually really impressed. I know the fact that as soon as I bolt this on the car, it is going to make the rest of the car look crap. Because the rest of the car is this colour. This faded kind of greeny colour. But it's done. So that's one thing less to do. Right, so this is the current uh, state of affairs. So, as you can see, the wing is on. It doesn't look too bad, apart from when you see it against the door. It's a totally different colour, but it kind of, very similar to the A-pillar, or not. Um, but yeah, so the wing is on. It's all bolted in. Uh, the door gap is it's actually not bad for saying it's not a genuine wing and also the gap between the bonnet and that. But this is what I'm currently on, replacing the radiator. So if you've got a 160, never had to do this. It's a pain in the absolute rectum. So as you can see, alternator's uh, bolted out of the way, so is the bracket. Um, now, if, to get the, the radiator out, you have to take the fan off, which is currently down there so you put that on or I took that off first because there was literally no room 
uh, and then it was a very tight squeeze. Now this pipe, unfortunately, this is the aircon. Uh, if you haven't got an aircon vehicle, I can imagine it being a lot easier, but this pipe was kind of in the way, so kind of just scooched it out, um, which with it being the old radiator, did slightly bend it and everything. But what I've done is just uh, carefully put uh, a bar through here. Or oh, what was it I put through? Ah, yeah, me uh, adjustable through here, like so. And then I just hit it with the, uh, the Thor hammer, just to kind of bend that pipe out the way so that when I come to put the new radiator in, it should just slot in. So yeah, here's the state of the old radiator. So this is the top of it now. And oh, now I noticed when I took the had the bumper off, I noticed these fins looked a bit grotty and you know falling out and let's see just do that. Yeah. It's gone there, but also see there it's starting to leak. And at the back as well, it had gone. And these fins are just just absolutely destroyed, you can see. They're just no good. Some of them are solid, but a lot of them. If you get the old screwdriver, you know, look, it's just... They're just turning to dust. So that's not too bad. They're not too bad. But, uh, yeah, they've just totally, totally rotten. And, uh, yeah, not good. So I think uh, taking the call to replace this uh, was uh, a good shout. Right, and here's the new radiator, as you can see, very shiny. So the old radiator, and it looks like everything matches up, apart from where the fan so you've got these screws in here and you've got these blocks. So I think the fan is going to have to be cable tied. Uh, what I'm looking for. Yeah. So it looks like the fan will have to be cable tied for the time being. But in all, that looks like a good replacement and a good call. It's in. So as we can see, radiator is in. There you go. Nice and shiny. Alternator back in, belt back on, bracket done, hose connected at the top and bottom. I need to screw this in. Now at the moment, the fan, which is a bit of a bugger, so the fan was held on with these, two at the bottom, two at the top. And uh, yeah, the new fan or the new radiator doesn't allow, doesn't have any thread for these to go into. So it's going to be a nut and bolt washer kind of jobby to fit them. So what I need to do now, I'm not going to bother bleeding it at the moment because uh, I need a hose clamp for that one and the bottom hose. But for the meantime, all I'm going to do is chuck the battery in it and uh, wind the window up. But yeah, that is pretty much it. So join me tomorrow when I hopefully finally get the bumper on. Also, the rest of the hose is connected up. And we'll also get round to bleeding the thing as well. Another thing I've got to do is to do the uh, Lamber sensor post-cat. Um, there's a pre-cat and a post-cat. Uh, so I just need to get it on a set of ramps. That will be tomorrow. So, see you in a second. Right, it's the next day. Actually, no, it's two days later. So, let me show you what I've been getting on with, with the old car. Airbox is back in, pipes are all done and dusted. Coolant is a bit overfilled, but uh, need to chuck the battery in it. And let's burp the system and uh, run it up to temp and see what happens. Right, also got to, went and got to a jerry can full of fuel because she was a bit low. Right, here we go. Might have to turn the heaters on in a minute. But, uh, oh, I'm so out of breath.
so unfit. Right, contact. All right. Fans are on, so we'll get chooching at that then. Well, as you can tell, it's starting to get dark now. It is uh, currently coming up to quarter to six. So the sun is setting, or it's already set. Been bleeding this for about an hour. Um, everything seems fine. The only struggle, 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 God, it's been a long day. The only trouble I'm having is that the coolant temp gauge is just below halfway. Uh, there we go. Can you see it? So, yeah, so that hasn't gone any higher than that. Um, everything seems to be good. I've got a little, where is it? Uh, uh, I don't know where I've put it, but I've got a um, heat detector gun that you just point with a laser and, beep, beep, and it tells you all the heat. Um, thermostat seems to be opening, um, but uh, yeah, getting no heat through the through the, uh, the vents. So whether there's an airlock, but surely if there was an airlock, the temperature would go up. So need to do a bit more research into that. Um, as you can see in this fine car, the headliner is rather sagging and needs pinning up. Um, but yeah, so judging by this, the radiator is done. No leaks, um, seems to be working fine. So I'm gonna leave the video there. As you can tell, sorry, for the, the absolute piss poor light. So gonna leave the video there. Uh, the next one on this will be putting the front bumper back on, uh, getting the oxygen sensor, the, the post cat sensor fitted, and I need to get it on the ramps. Uh, which I'll do before I put the front bumper on because uh, they they can catch uh, and then uh, From there on it is a case of Just giving it a once-over. I've already checked the lights today. Everything's working uh, I can do the brake lights are working indicators are working apart from the fronts because they're not plugged in so yeah so that'll be in the next video and then booking in it in it in it in in it booking it into for its MOT next Friday so today is Friday as I film this Friday the 16th so next Friday it will be in for MOT which will be a separate video and then hopefully it passes and we will we'll be at Rustaval on the 9th of March uh, at uh, the British Motor Museum at Gaydon that's been hosted by the likes of uh, Ian from uh, Hubnut, Steph from iDriver Classic and Matt I believe is from uh, Furious Driving uh, and uh, with any chance I'll be able to do you know get them to have a look at the car and see what they think of it uh, in all its uh, lack appeal glory so uh, yeah, sorry about the light, folks. But uh, yeah, so until then, folks, until the next video, have a good one. Uh, remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, it, it really helps the channel. Help the channel grow by subscribing. And until the next time, folks, have a good one. And remember, daily bye.